we're at Macquarie Campus um, in Sydney, Australia, and we are demonstrating with Nokia the use of a drone for temporary cell site coverage. Australia actually experiences many extreme weather events from bushfires to floods to tropical cyclones. So the bushfires on the south coast of New South Wales in 2019-2020 presented some real unique challenges for our field staff. Not only were we unable to get into the areas at the particular time, but we knew that there was team members, community members, emergency services in the area that needed our vital services. And with Cyclone Alfred, it presented another unique set of challenges for us. There was flooding, flash flooding, roads cut off, power was always going to be a challenge post the cyclone moving through. And so we wanted to ensure that we were powering our mobile sites as quickly as we could and restoring that critical service to customers. As these extreme weather events continue, we need to find ways that we can rapidly deploy and restore service as quickly as possible. Traditional south sites on wheels are quite large tandem trailers. We had to move them from other parts of the country. Uh, we also had some of them pre-deployed. However, a tethered drone solution, uh, you could easily put in the back of a utility vehicle, get to site quickly, as long as you've got a generator, some form of uh, satellite backhaul or other backhaul, you could have coverage up relatively quickly. And the drone technology provides two key things, I think, for our customers and the communities. One, it is the rapid deployment of service to ensure that we're expanding the mobile coverage as quickly as we can. And the other component is a 360 degree camera. For us back in a command and control center, understanding what's happening on the ground Ensuring that we're only sending our field technicians in when it's safe is super critical. The customer having service during any natural disaster or extreme weather event is important. To contact family and friends, ensure that they're safe, to be able to understand what's happening in the environment. The emergency services are critically dependent on our radio communications. Working with Nokia, we're able to innovate quickly. So we go from the macro cell site, which we're looking at how we can have uh, emergency generators, smaller generators, and use self-optimizing networks to make sure that we have overlapping coverage. So there's a range of solutions to optimize the macro network. And then as you move down, there are small cells that can be mounted outdoors. And so we've got scalability from very small to very large and under emergency situations, we've got ways of configuring and using them all so that they can interlock seamlessly and, and hopefully restore coverage to customers as very rapidly. The options that this connectivity brings, we can either have it running as a private network or we can have it connected in a hybrid situation directly back into the public network. From a dedicated network perspective, it means we can really have that resilient, always on experience for the customer. Innovation is key. We always want to improve and strive to be able to respond as best we can in any situation. So the partnership with Nokia is very integral to what we do. Partnering with Nokia, what we've been able to really achieve here is a very rapid deployment of a coverage solution to bring the connectivity that the community needs at a time of need following some of these emergency situations. I've been working with Nokia now for probably 15 years. They've been a very strong partner for me and my various um, roles and I'd like to see that partnership continue.